خاطب الحور الحسان وطالبا لوصالهن بجنة الحيوان أسرع وحث السير جاهدك إنما مسراك هذا ساعة لزمان هي جنة طابت وطاب نعيمها فنعيمها باق وليس بفان وبناء Ahl sunnah believes the companions are the best of mankind after the prophets. Alayhim after salatu wa salam, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. A companion is whoever met the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a believer in him and died upon that belief. Even if he had apostated before returning back to Islam and then died as a believer. This is who a companion is and according to uh, the, the definition of the ulama. The following is a compulsory or is compulsory upon us regarding the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. Number one is having a healthy heart, free from malice and spite, and it also and also a tongue free from demeaning and degrading their abilities. Number two is being pleased with them, ajma'in. Number three, it is the firm belief that they are uh, that they were all just and that they are more knowledgeable than whoever came after them. They were the most knowledgeable uh, of, of the Ummah after the Prophet ﷺ. They were there. They're the most knowledgeable regarding the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. So since the affair is like this, then it is compulsory to follow in their footsteps and knowledge and deeds due to the general saying of the Prophet ﷺ, what I am upon and what my companions are upon. And there's kathra, uh, there's so many ahadith mentioning this and ayats, wa'atiyu Allah, wa'atiyu Rasul, and, and, and following the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then following his companions, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what I am upon and what my companions are upon. So if you want guidance, follow what the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were upon, what they understood, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. Number four is refraining from speaking about the conflict that took place between, uh, took place between with them. That, the, 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 that when the companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, when they had conflict, they were the best of the ummah. They were the best, they were guaranteed paradise. And even their conflict, it was based upon ijtihad. It was based upon meaning that both parties will be rewarded even though it went to the level of bloodshed. So refrain from speaking about that 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 issue in that issue and that thing in history because they were the best of the ummah they were guaranteed pro, uh, paradise by the prophet sallallahu wasallam and the best of the companions radiyallahu ta'ala anhum is the rightly guided khalifa abu bakr then umar then uthman then ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in then the rest of the 10 who were promised jannah who were promised paradise. And they are uh, Abu Ubaidah bin Jarrah, uh, Sa'd bin Abi Waqqas, Abdurrahman bin Awf, Zubair bin Awam, Talha bin uh, Ubaidullah, and Sa'id bin Zayd bin uh, Amri uh, ibn Nufail. The rest of the companions who fought in Badr. Then the companions who took the pledge under the tree. Then those who, uh, those, uh, who came who became Muslim before the conquest of Mecca and fighting took place. Then whoever became Muslim after the conquest of Mecca and fighting. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. May Allah be pleased with all the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Walau kari al-kafirun. Walau kari al-mushrikun. Walau kari al-ahla bid'a wa zandaka. Walau kari al-ahla tashayi'a. So even though the disbelievers, even though the apostates, even though the people of innovation, even though the people, the Shia, hate this, may Allah be pleased upon all the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam. The family of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam are those who were prohibited from receiving charity, and they are the family of Ali, the family of Jafar, the family of Aqil, the family of Abbas, and Banu Al Harith bin Abdul Muttalib. 
and the wives of the Prophet and his daughters, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, ajma'een. And Ahlul Sunnah loves the family of the Messenger of Allah, of Allah وسلم, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, ajma'een, and has great love and admiration for them and respects them. For he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Allah reminds you regarding my family. Except whoever differed from the sunnah and was not straight in the religion amongst them. So from those people who came later, who are in the lineage of the Prophet sallallahu if they went away from the sunnah or they left Islam or what have you, then of course they don't have the love of the believers or their, their, the love of the believers is in accordance with their obedience to Allah. This is imperative for us to know. This is al-wala wal-bara in, with the believers. This is loving and hating for the sake of Allah. That you love someone in accordance with their level of iman. So a shaykh, a scholar that has knowledge and practices that knowledge, we love them more because they articulate the knowledge and they embody the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. The person who's a fasik, who is a Muslim, but yet they have many sins, we love them less in accordance with their iman. This is also a part of the belief of Ahl al-Sunnati wal Jama'ah. The Shaykh went on to mention, Ahl al-Sunnah loves the wives of the Prophet wasallam and has great admiration for them all, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, and sees them as the mothers of the believers. And this is in contradiction to the Rafadiyya, the Ithna Ashiriya, and those other wicked Shia. And I, I hate to be of those people, I don't want to hurt your hearts by saying wicked, but in fact, what can you call evil other than evil? What can you call someone who curses your mothers and calls them adulterers, and calls them people who have apostated? As if the Prophet ﷺ didn't know how to choose the best of wives. As if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qadr didn't know, Allah didn't know how to choose the best uh, people and the best of examples and make these people the mothers of the believers. As if Allah made a mistake in the Quran and, and praised them. But these Shia, they have a whole different creed. And they have a whole other system of belief and, 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 and speak against the wives of the Prophet ﷺ. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them their just reward for speaking ill about the mothers of believers. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. The mother first, and Ahl Sunnah loves to the highest extent the wives of the believers and believes them to be in paradise. Especially Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, the mother of most of his children and the first to believe in him and support him. And Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha, the daughter of Abu Bakr, a siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam married 11 women, and during his life two died. They were Khadija and Zainab bint Khuzayma. And the nine who died after them were Aisha, Hafsa, Zainab bint Jash, uh, Umm Salama, Safiya, Maymuna, Umm Habiba, Soda, uh, Soda and Juwayhira. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. Faith to Ahl Sunnah. After speaking about the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, it's imperative that we speak briefly about faith. Faith in general to Ahl Sunnah, it involves speech and actions and statements of the heart. This is what Iman is in Islam. It's on the tongue, it's in actions, and it's in the heart. It has to do with our intentions, our trust, our reliance, and actions of the limbs. Even taking, removing a harm from the road is a type of iman, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. Prophet ﷺ mentioned in a hadith in Sahih Muslim, uh, on uh, Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu, qal, sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, مَنْ رَاءَوْ مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرٍ فَلْيُغَيْرُهُ بِيَدٍ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِلِسَانِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِلْقَلْبِهِ وَذَلِكَ عَدَفَ الْإِمَانِ رواه مسلم In this hadith of, that was collected in Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever sees amongst you a bad or something evil, then change it with his hands. And if he's unable to do so, 
than with his tongue, speaking out against it. And if he's unable to do so, with his heart. And that is the weakest form of faith. That shows us, as the Prophet ﷺ denoted those things as faith. He said, And that's the weakest level of Iman. That shows us all those things are maratab al-Iman. They're levels of Iman. The first one and the highest one is changing uh, uh, something sinful with your hands, if you're able to do so. If there's more maslaha than mafsada. If there's a more benefit than harm in doing so. And the second type is changing changing it with your tongue, meaning speaking out against it. Again, the same principle applies if you're able to do so. And if there's more uh, benefit than harm by doing it. For example, if by speaking out against the harm, the, it's going to cause a greater harm, then you shouldn't speak about it. Then you move to the next, ne next level of Iman, which is hating it in your heart. And that's the weakest form of faith, but it's still a form of Iman. So that shows us what Ahlul Sunnah believes. Iman is in the heart. Iman is on the tongue. Iman is, uh, it's on the heart, it's on the tongue, and it's also through speech. There are many important things that we want to realize regarding Iman. That Iman, those good deeds are from faith. And they, were, they are a pillar of it. So when we do deeds, that's a pillar of Iman. Number two, that faith increases and decreases. It increases with obedience to Allah and decreases through disobedience, meaning through sinfulness. Number three, that faith differs in the hearts of believers. Some are strong and some are weak, but they're still all believers. Number four, that the major sins do not take someone outside of the fold of Islam, except if they make those sins lawful. Or it is mentioned in the Quran or the Sunnah as disbelief. So for example, if someone is an alcoholic, but they're a Muslim, they're still a Muslim, but they're just a sinner. But if they believe alcohol to be lawful for them, that's when they can leave the fold of Islam because they've made the unlawful lawful. Number five, that disbelief can be in creed, speech, and deed. So you can fall, you can leave the fold of Islam, as we mentioned before in the prior lecture, that disbelief you can fall uh, through, it can be through your creed, it can be through speech, or it can also be through actions. So be careful. Number six, that the sinner who worships Allah alone, the muahid, who dies without making repentance, then his affairs with Allah. If he wills, he will forgive him, and if he wills, he will punish him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as we mentioned before, in Allah la yaghfiru an yushrika bihi, wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika li man yasha. Verily, Allah does not forgive who uh, associating partners with Him. And He forgives other than that for whomsoever He pleases. Seven, that the sinful muwahid, if He enters the hellfire, He will not remain in there forever. The eighth thing is, that disbelief is two types, and shirk is of two types. Likewise, oppression and hypocrisy and transgression, transgression and sins and mistakes are all of two types. All of these are comprised of two types. And one of them that takes a person out of the fold of the religion, and the other type which does not require or does not take a person out of the fold of religion. So we have to know that all of those things have different categories. And this is in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah. This is what the ulama have taken by looking at the Quran and the Sunnah and deriving these uh, categories from the text. Number nine, it is permissible to take exception regarding Iman by saying, inshallah and a mu'min. For example, inshallah, if God wills, I'm a believer. Okay? Uh, this is permissible as it's mentioned upon the Salaf that some of them used to say this. And number 10, that repentance is accepted from the one who worships Allah alone if he meets the conditions of repentance. So if a person, they feel sorrow in their heart, they're determined not to go back to that sin again, and they are sincere to Allah, then Allah will accept your repentance. All the doors of repentance are open. As the Prophet ﷺ mentioned to us, that toba, that repentance does not, uh, st does not cease until hijra cease, and hijra does not cease until the sun rises from the uh, west. 
And so this lets us know that until the day of judgment, that the doors of repentance are open for us. May Allah bless us all with repentance and accepted repentance. Ameen. Ahlul Sunnah believe in the miracles of the friends of Allah, the awliya. The awliya of Allah are pious believers and every believer who fears Allah, then he is a wali of Allah in accordance with the level of his iman, as we mentioned before, the level of his, his or her faith and his piety. So all of us, if we're a Muslim, if we're a believer in Allah, then we are a, a, an, a, a wali to a greater and lesser extent. Those who have stronger iman, stronger faith, and are closer to Allah, they, and have more knowledge and practice it, they are closer to Allah, they are stronger awliya of Allah. And Allah has made apparent extraordinary signs, which are similar to, you might say, miracles, bestowing honor from Allah as a reward for following the Messenger وسلم, to those awliya. So some of the people are blessed with certain type of miracles. Don't be surprised. Some people are blessed with that. And the only way, as the Shaykh continues on to mention, he mentions, and it is not that every friend of Allah receives miracles. Verily, it is only for some of them. As for when someone gains extraordinary signs from the wicked people that do not know Allah and do not tread the path of the Sunnah, then it is not a miracle. Instead, it is, a, it is charlatism or magic or fraud. Some of the pious predecessors used to say, if you see a man walking on water or flying through the air, do not become amazed until you know if he is upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ahl-Sunnati ahl wal-Jama'ah believes the main group of Muslims uh, is necessary and that they see that hearing and obey whoever is uh, Allah gives authority over them and goodness is compulsory. And they hold the opinion that jihad and that hajj and establishing the Jumu'ah and Eid holidays and the, uh, with the leaders is compulsory. Regardless of whether that leader is righteous or wicked, as long as he is a Muslim still, that we have to pray behind them and follow them in goodness. They do not believe in rebelling. This is a principle of Aqidah. You'll find it in all the early Aqidah books and even the later Aqidah books, the books of Creed. Ahl Sunnah does not believe in rebelling and encouraging the people to conspire against the leaders. They view that being patient with their oppression and they do not make uh, oppression an excuse to break, to break the Pledge of Allegiance or rebel against them. Ahl Sunnah does not also believe in making secret pledges to new groups and new jama'at and new leaders and new Sufi sheikhs and Sufi tariqah. That's not from uh, Islam. It has no place in Islam. The, the bay'ah goes to the, the ultimate Muslim leader or to the leader of that land. Ahl Sunnah does not believe in rebelling against a pr oppressive leader. And this is in accordance to the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who said, whoever sees something from his leader he hates, then be patient with him. For verily, there is not anyone who divides the jama'ah, even a hand span, then dies except that he dies the death of the days of ignorance. And there's so many uh, hadith in Sahih Muslim when mention the importance of not rebelling, even against the wicked leader. The Shaykh went on to mention that innovation, innovation it is to seek to come closer to Allah the Almighty with something Allah did not legislate and His Messenger وسلم, did not legislate. And this has to do with things in the religion. It doesn't mean that having a, a, a camera or a television screen or a s computer or a, a car or that this is innovation. This is innovation as far as technology, but it has nothing to do with religious innovation. Religious innovation has to th do with things that have to do with worship. And it is from the greatest things that corrupts a person's religion. Some of the pious predecessors said the devil is happier with innovation more than sin because sin is repented from and innovation is not repented from. The reason for this is that the one who innovates thinks that he is coming closer to Allah the Almighty through his deeds and this makes him not repent 
There is nothing from the religion called good innovation, meaning bid'ah hasana. Instead, all of innovation is evil and misguidance, as the Prophet ﷺ said, kullu bid'atan dalala. He ﷺ said it. He said, all innovation is astray, all of it. Innovation of two types. As uh, innovation in belief, like the sayings of the Jahmiya and the Mu'tazila in denying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes. And the Khawarij and Murjia, whose creed is deviant regarding faith and, and Iman and other than them from the people of innovation. Innovation in action is the second type. This is in open acts of worship, like seeking to come closer to Allah by worshiping uh, that which is not legislated by Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like the resemblance that some of the Sufis uh, practice or the, the types of remembrance and dhikr that they practice and like celebrating the birthday of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the day the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ascended to the heavens and similar practices. None of this the Sahaba, none of this the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did or legislated or authorized. None of this the companions uh, did or authorized. None of this did the Tabi'een authorize or do or the Itba'a Tabi'een. But the later people innovated these practices. And so they're not from Islam. Avoid them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has already prophesied that the community of Muslims would break into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one, and is those who were upon what he was upon and his companions. And, and that's what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in an authentic hadith. He said, If tarakat al Yahud ala ihta wa sab'in farqa, wa if tarakat al Nasara ala ihta natain wa sab'in farqa, wa sa taftarku hadi umma ala tharatha wa sab'in farqa, kullaha fin nar al wahida, kulla men hi ya Rasulullah, kala men kan ala mithi wa ma kana alayhi wa ashabi al yom. So the Prophet ﷺ illustrated for us that the Ummah would break into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one, except those who followed what he was upon and his companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, wa sallallahu wasallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. The Ahl Sunnah believes and they cling to the religion correctly and are few amongst the people. So even if you're few, hold on to the Sunnah. They are Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah and they remain upon the path of the pious predecessors in knowledge, in deeds. From them are the major Imams that are followed, like Hassan al-Basri, Sufyan al-Thawri, and Uzai, and Imam Malik, and Imam Shafi'i, Imam Abu Hanifa, and Imam Ahmed, and Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, and Ibn al-Qayyum, and Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, and other than them, and the Imams of this day, all the way into the Day of Judgment. Those were the great Imams and preservers of this religion. We love them all, we follow them, and we, uh, follow their example and follow what they preserved of the religion. We follow them in that which they were upon that was correct. Any mistakes that they made in ijtihad, we don't follow their mistakes, no matter how great of an imam they were. Because the only one who is free from mistakes is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kullu ibn Adam khatta wa khayra khata'ina tawabun. That all the children of Adam make mistakes and all of them uh, and the closest and the best of them who make those mistakes or sins are those who make repentance. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And bless us to be of the tawabin, wa mutatahirin, wa sabirin, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And may Allah love us, and may Allah forgive us, and may Allah help the Muslims everywhere and guide the Muslims everywhere. And bless us to be of benefit on our scales of good deeds. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. يا خاطب الحور الحسان وطالبا لوصالهن بجنة الحيوان أسرع وحث السير جهدك إنما مسرك هذا ساعة لزمان